This is the Microburst by Anzuliches. Um, this is going to be a technical video that kind of shows you about the ins and outs and the pros and cons of it. We're going to go, we're going to go a little bit more in depth than a typical overview video. But to summarize, if you haven't seen it, the Microburst is a shell ejecting CO2 powered blaster. It's a very cool feel because it's shell ejecting, which is always a plus. And you can use it as a primary or a secondary by using a, the grip design as a primary, or you can just pop pins out, slide the grip off, and then use it as a secondary. So it's designed by Anzulages, who is also the maker of the Tempest. So it's a secondary that attaches to your blaster, or you can have a secondary, you can use it as a secondary with a handle on it. Um, you can use any of the Spring Thunder shells designed by GDOP or Shellington Blasters. So you can use your single shot, rival, boomco, or mega. That is one of the biggest benefits of having a blaster that shoots a variety of ammo is you can use megas in special games such as, you know, tagging special zombies or disabling shields. You can also make your own shells to fire whatever ammo you'd like, such as a rocket. So as far as I'm aware, this is the smallest rocket launcher you're gonna be able to find as well. So that's super cool. It's, it's really awesome. You can use Mega, Boomco, regular dart or rival or a rocket for his ammo. You can also use any of the Spring Thunder shells and some people make their own. Um, and these will give you different performance, different spreads. And of course the Mega and the rocket can give you different um, boost in a game you're playing, depending on what game you're playing. The construction is actually very simple as well. Like I said, the whole thing is assembled by pins, makes it really easy to put together, and makes it very cheap as well. The only issue with this blaster is the price. The hardware and prints are pretty simple, the prints are pretty quick, but you do need CO2 and an HPA setup. Um, the microburst itself, as a design, does not have the best of air seal, so you lose some efficiency for the cool factor, but you don't really need that in what this is made to do. Also, as you may know, with the uh, Spring Thunder or similar blasters, as a shell ejecting shotgun type blaster, you don't have very much accuracy. So it's not a secondary that you would rely on for its ability to hit a single target, but it can be a useful secondary um, because you shoot various ammo types and as a kind of a fun add-on to your blaster. The trigger is activating a MJVO3 valve, so a quick pull will give you the best performance, and a consistent pull will give you consistent performance. It is powered by a CO2 adapter by Wolverine Airsoft, it's called a Wraith adapter, but you can use any adapter that fits in the shell, of course, for larger canisters of CO2. This, by default, uses a 12 gram canister. The regulator that Anzulages has designed it for is the Storm regulator, again, by Wolverine Airsoft. It fits very nicely, in the housing and you can easily adjust the pressure with a 3 30 seconds Allen key. You want to screw it in to decrease your pressure and screw it out to increase your pressure. And all that air then goes through that valve and into the Specs BZ tank that powers the blaster. This Specs BZ tank is by Spectra Armaments and it just pushes the air into the shell. The barrel here is what houses the shell and is released by this latch on the bottom. And it is ambidextrous, so you can activate it from either side. And the barrel has a foam blast drum spring, so as you pull the lever, it just opens it up. And if you hold the blaster up, then it ejects the shell. And it has a locking barrel catch for the release. And the blaster itself is a really fun platform. It's not made for performance, but it's definitely made for its cool factor. So I talked about the rails a couple times, talked about the Picatinny grip, you can just pop out these pins, slide the grip off, and then you have the reverse Picatinny that you can attach it to your blaster. It was designed by Anzulages, like I mentioned, so it fits perfectly on the Tempest. It also fits on any blaster with a lower Picatinny, such as the M79 by Milsig. Gives it a nice feel. And it just slides on and off. Sometimes it takes some pressure, so make sure you use even pressure and you don't try to 
hit it because that impact force could break your blaster. But if you just pull, you get a nice consistent pressure, it'll slide off. And it also fits on the neutrino with its lower picatinny. So any blaster with its lower picatinny, you can just slide it on. And you're of course not limited to lower picatinny if you want to be kind of weird. I mean, that works too, I guess. So there you go, you could have like two microbursts on one blaster or more, so that's fun. So you've got three triggers, there you go. Oh. So the microburst, um, like a lot of HPA setups and CO2 setups, can be a little bit of a learning curve to get started with. But once you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. So the microburst can be disassembled by removing the grip and just popping out these two pins. You just slide out. That pins just pop out with a small little poker stick. And then the handle or the trigger group comes out and then you have your internals. Well, these are the internals. And so it's very simple. As you can tell, it has a Specs BZ tank by Spectre armaments with a fitting that goes into an MJV03 valve with another fitting that goes into your regulator with a CO2 adapter on it. That's all the register internals. So the blaster itself is very simple. It just has a couple of pins and some springs and that's it. And then the HPA CO2 internals is what uh, makes it so expensive. Now this blaster, you can see it has fittings and with most HPA setups, they can leak and it can be a little bit finicky to get the air seal right. But if you do have issue with the air seal, all you need to do is adjust your sealing tape and then adjust the threading and the fitting. So you don't have a fitting that's more threaded into one side than the other side. So as long as you kind of just split the difference in, in how far you thread the fittings in, you should be fine. The most finicky or the most Difficult thing to get working on this is the CO2 adapter. Um, you may have seen other videos where CO2 adapters may not work as quickly or easily as you would like, but here I'll show you how easy it is. So for the microburst itself, to load a CO2 canister, you will use a 12 gram canister. Now these are six hour canisters. Um, and I've so far haven't had any problem using any of the ones I've been able to find at Walmart or online such as Amazon. So you can get SIG canisters. You can get other brand, Walmart brand canisters for cycling, for bicycles or for airsoft or paintball or pellet guns. So these are these canisters and cycling are actually used for a uh, small compact portable bicycle pump inflator. So pretty common. So 12 gram, you would just want one that fits in the adapter. And then to engage the air, you puncture the tank by screwing this cap on. Now, what you have to make sure is you do a nice, firm, tight twist. You don't want to, so it's got two locks on it. So this is just off, and this is locked on but not punctured, and then one more notch will puncture the canister. Now, you puncture it as you move across. Um, as you twist it. And so if you twist it halfway and not all the way, then the pressure will release from the canister resulting in the canister being pushed back and you won't be able to get the cap on. So you'll be fighting all that pressure. So when you puncture it, you want to puncture and twist it all the way all in one smooth motion like this. Super easy, it might look very easy, but if you don't twist it all the way, nice and quick, then you're going to be leaking gas and then you're ready to go. So that is important and the way you get it to work as well as that just did um, where you can, once that's out, you can just take the empty one out, throw the canister away, put a new canister in, tighten it again. You want to make sure that you have a good grip. So I always open the barrel and twist it nice and hard. But in order to make sure that it works well, you have to actually adjust your CO2 adapter. Okay. So the adapter comes with a ring, a retaining ring that you can use to set the length. So if your CO2 canister is a different length, you can adjust the length of your adapter to make it so you have just the right distance so you end up puncturing and maintaining the air seal. If the CO2 adapter is too long, you'll end up puncturing the tank but not creating an air seal on the inside of the adapter resulting in you venting CO2 and you'll hear it, you'll click it 
It'll lock in place, a puncture tank, but then it'll just hiss and vent your gas. That means your canister adapter is too long. Now, if it's too short, you'll try to puncture it and lock the cap in place. So you'll be able to puncture it, but then the cap won't lock in place. And so the only option is to let go, resulting in it falling back to that first lug, which is just the, the first notch just to keep the cap on, but not the second nub to push the canister and get that air seal. So you're then also end up venting air. So in order to adjust your adapter for your canister, you just, you can just unscrew the two halves and then adjust this ring in the middle. And these Wraith Wolverine CO2 adapters come with this special key here that you can use to actually tighten the adapter as well. Or I find it a lot easier just to use a pair of pliers. You may scar up the surface a little bit, but it's just a cosmetic coating just to lock that in place. And it may take a little bit of trial and error because you want this locking ring really tight. So as you install the adapter into your regulator or you twist on the cap, you don't end up twisting and adjusting the length of your adapter. So that is how you get reliability out of the CO2 setup. And that's what a lot of people don't realize makes a big difference. So we'll tighten that ring nice and tight. And then when you uh, install any HPA with O-rings, always make sure you lubricate your O-rings. And that is how you use the microburst. So when you first get your microburst, you will want to make sure that it's adjusted. And so if you try to use a canister and it ends up leaking or not engaging correctly, adjust it. So that's some troubleshooting for you. If at any point you would like to buy any piece of the hardware on the Macaburst, say you lost your CO2 adapter cap, you can actually order these separately. There are, the caps themselves are about $12, um, and all of the different parts and components you can purchase individually from us as well. So if you want to use hardware that you already have or build it piecewise, you can do that as well, because that's an important piece. So if we just start with a regular microburst, this has a CO2 canister already loaded in it. This pressure is currently set to about 80 PSI. You can go as low as 40 PSI, and one eighth of a turn is 15 PSI on the regulator. So if I turn it about an eighth, okay. So now it's about 50 PSI. You can hear the power went down a lot. If I pull the trigger faster, it'll be more powerful and more consistent. So that's at about 50 PSI. My favorite is the rival. So you can shoot three rival balls, two rival balls, or one rival ball. So you can fire two elite darts or four half length darts. You can shoot two or three rival balls, boom co, a single dart, or a mega dart. And each of the different darts and shell types will give you a different performance and also depending on your pressure. So the lowest pressure at about 40 psi will give you the least performance. There you go. And it can go all the way up to 140 PSI. Do not go higher than that though, or you would risk potential damage to your internals. So here's the FPS you can expect with all of these darts. All right, time to test fire the microburst. Now put your CO2 in, put your cap on. Now that first nut locks it in, twist it all the way nice and firm, one hard twist, punctures, you can hear the air engage and you're good to go and no air leak, so we're good. So our CO2 can our adapter was adjusted. We're ready to fire some shells. So this is on about near the lowest PSI setting, about 40 to 50 PSI, and we're going to fire each of the shell types to see what we get. We've got six types, and I don't think this is gonna fit in our chronograph, so we won't have to be able to do that. We'll start with the, uh, the quad half-length dart. We've got 85 FPS, 91, 76, 93. Pretty reliable. If I pull the trigger slower though, it does decrease the FPS. So you gotta remember that. But that's pretty good. You have four short darts, 93 FPS. Now I'm gonna do the lowest power with the Boomco shell, the three Boomco straws. 100. 
96. That's pretty good. Again, about 100 FPS with the Boomco. Then we have three rival balls for a Spring Thunder. I usually just do two, but the Microverse is a little more oomph, so I'm gonna do three. 114. That's already better than a Spring Thunder. 120. That's the lowest power. That's that's maybe a little bit higher than lowest power. Last but not least, the Mega Shell with a cut down Mega Accu Mega. Hundred and seven. Seventy six. Pull the trigger too slow. We got one hundred. So that's pretty good. Uh, we'll do a single elite. So this is just one half length dart, worker dart. One hundred and eighty. So you can turn that down a little more. You worry about the power. So you just put your Allen key in the little hole there and you rotate it clockwise. So now we're at 40 FPS or 40 PSI. So that'll bring down our single elite. Hundred and thirty four. So much better. Our rival, three rival balls, about 100 FPS. So that, that's about the lowest power. So I was not at the lowest power before, but now I am. So there's your numbers. Now if we were to crank this sucker up, we want to rotate that almost all the way out until we get to the highest pressure. And you can see the dial starting to move. Go up to 120. Now, you're not going to get as many shots on a higher pressure, but you can just hear the difference. So we'll go back to our four elite. Or four half length. 125. 110. Looks like we reached our limit. Uh, let's see, what we did that. We did a boom cut. Always wear eye protection. Nope. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, too powerful for the little chronograph. That or I'm hitting the side of it. Let's see. Not there. Super easy swap out. You just take the cap off. Take out your old cylinder or canister, put new canister in. I like to open it. Good to go. So this is about the highest pressure at 120. It's not in the color graph around it. I have to say it's plenty powerful. Too powerful. That's weird. Am I holding it? Hmm. Okay. Uh, three rival balls. 150. Mega. Okay, blew the head off that one. Well, I'm already running out of air. Okay, that was over 200. 185. Check this dart out. That hit the inside of the chronograph. The issue is you get a lot of dust and a lot of that, uh, that, that condensation from the gas messing up the chronograph. But it's, it's shooting 
at least 200 feet per second, probably more. This is not super great. The chronograph is picking up all the, you yeah. Basically, yeah, it's, 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 it's really powerful. We should probably just, oh God. So that 215 from it, so it shoots between 90 FPS and you know, 250 FPS depending on your shell. Now the accuracy is subpar because you get the shotgun grouping. I don't know if you can see from this video what the grouping is like, but that's what you get. You know, custom shell, slide it in there. You fire a rocket. There is hole in Nope. So don't fire rockets on too high of pressure because you'll blow them up. Thanks for watching guys. Microburst is so fun. I think we just filmed for like two hours, just having a blast. At least I had a blast, but thanks for watching. Pick up a Microburst, it is worth it. Um, it's about $300. The CO2 adapter, the tank, and the regulator alone are about $250, $300. So honestly, it's a really good deal, and you should really get one. They're so fun. I'm not being salesy, but it's fun. Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, take a look at uh, what we're going to be producing next. These designs aren't necessarily new, but they are now available and more accessible. Because previously, you'd have to pay about $800 for one of these but now you can pay less for more fun.